put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Dangerous Method Mood Review. The year is 1904 and Dr. Young is starting to use his so-called speech therapy, basically what we know today as psychoanalysis, and he tries this out on this new patient of his, the simultaneously animal-like and yet very frail Sabina Spielein, I think that's how you pronounce it. And there may just be some great consequences to this therapy. The film furthermore goes into Freud, the relationship between Jung and Freud, Grossman, Otto Grossman, and the actual contributions to the field of psychology by Spielein herself. This is a rather good drama, character drama, as with numerous other David Cronenberg films, it is all about the characters. And as it does go into psychoanalysis with, you know, including Freud's perspective on that, with the heavy emphasis on sexuality, sex, sexuality, there are some things in this that are going to really bother people, even people who might not consider themselves prudish. If you know what Cronenberg's films are like, this is less graphic, less explicit, and it's not violent. But other than that, yeah, expect Cronenberg levels, you know. I was actually quite impressed with just how courageous this was in its treatment of psychology. And something really, a, a really positive quality about it is it doesn't take sides and it passes no judgment. It doesn't say if something is right or wrong. Basically, all four of these psychologists, including Spielein, all make their case for their view on psychoanalysis or um, sort of the nature of man, you know, the, the psyche, basically. And the film never says this is right or this is wrong about any of those. They just, they express it and sometimes even debate it a little. And it's up to the audience to make up our own mind. And personally, I'd say there's some truth to all four. And it's a rather compelling drama as well. The sort of, just, you know, how, how it affects a person to be either a patient or a therapist and the, the effect that people have on each other. The acting is phenomenal. I especially have to mention Kira Knightley. I had heard that her performance was really bold, and 
I, I was still blown away right from, she, she's one of the first things you see in the film. And right from the get-go, I mean, early on, she really makes you uncomfortable. It's, it is deeply unpleasant to watch. You can tell that this is someone who is not well, you know, and it, it's just, it's one of the bravest performances I've seen in some years. It might actually top Kirsten Dunst uh, in Melancholia. And the fact that she still... I mean, her character changes over the course of the film. I don't really want to give too much away. But yeah, just, you, you buy it all. There, there is no real... There, there's nothing about her character or her development that, come, that, that seems off or unconvincing. And, as expected, you know, Fassbender not only looks the part perfectly, I mean, show, you know, a still of him in, you know, in this compared to an actual, excuse me, photo of Young, you, you can barely tell the difference at all. And he plays it perfectly. There is this youthfulness to his character. I mean, I'll admit I haven't seen that many Fassbender films, but it's there. There's just something to this specific character that I don't really feel like I've seen in any of the other roles. There is this youthful curiosity, this this innate openness. He he comes off as very un unbound, if if that's the word. Viggo Mortensen yet again in a Cronenberg film. Those guys have a serious bromance going on. He's fantastic as Freud. There is a cigar in either his mouth or his hand pretty much every time you see him. And again, he looks the part really well, and he has this air over him of this, the, you know, the, the father of psychoanalysis, you know, and he has a certain authority. And just the, the way he carries himself, you know, it's not a secret that he's a great actor, but he still really does great. He, he really disappears into the role. I actually, I wish we had gotten to see more of Otto Gross, because Vincent Cassell does a really great job. He has this... He's basically entirely uninhibited. He refuses to let inhibitions affect his actions. And he just, he just does it really well. If you want someone to portray a character who indulges his every whim, you hire a Frenchman, you know. So, yeah. The... The actual historical accuracy, I mean, I don't know exactly about all the events that transpire. Although I believe that the various, you know, psychological standpoints attributed to the, you know, actual historical figures who appear in this are accurate. But the locations also, they actually, I mean, I watched this with my father and his wife, and they could tell me, the, when you see Freud in his home, that is his home. Those are his things, you know, that they actually, I don't know, either reproduced or, like, rented from the museum, I think it was something like that. That's, yeah, really cool. It, it's very, very credible in that sort of way. And just in general, you know, every time you see them, you know, somewhere that, you know, historically they actually, you know, went, or, you know, such and such. Yeah, it just, it has this really, you know, convincing quality to it. Very, very natural and real. It's quite well paced. I didn't really feel like it ever 
slowed down or such, but again, it is very much about the characters. It's about what happens to these characters and the various developments they go through. And Young is very much the lead character, the protagonist. Freud is in it a, a little less, Spielwein also a bit less, and like I said, Gross not in it very much, unfortunately. I'm not sure there's much else to say. Just, yeah, really good drama. You know, you really get into it. It's one of the better films that, you know, Cronenberg has done in recent years. Certainly better than A History of Violence. I honestly have to re-watch the Russian gangster mafia film he did to say. Actually, I'd say that one might be a little bit better um, than this, but yes, if at all you want a thought-provoking film that, you know, gets you thinking about the nature of the human psyche and that does not tell you what it is. It just offers some explanations and then lets you do the thinking. You know, way too few movies dare to do this. Then, you know, definitely well worth watching. One thing I would maybe say is that it's not necessarily one you need to watch in a theater. I'm not... You wouldn't really miss much if you just watch it on, like, DVD or, you know, something. There's not that much use of the, you know, the big screen or the superior sound, sound system of a theater. But, yeah, definitely recommend it. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.